Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Starring Susan Douglas in a true story, I Speak for Democracy. afternoon in 1944. Place, a farmhouse near Fort Vermilion, a fur trading post in the northern wilds of Alberta, Canada, close to the border of the Northwest Territory. Six carbon, seven nitrogen, eight oxygen, nine fluorine. Oh, dear. Ten neon, eleven sodium. What is that you study, Yaroslavka? A new language? No, Mama. Chemical elements. The correspondence school says I have to memorize them. <laughs> that is good, Slauka. Your papa and I, we did not learn things like that in the old country before we came to Canada. And what we did learn, we like to forget. But, Papa, it's not enough. I want to learn more. It's so hard to memorize things like chemical elements with no way to apply them. She is right, Papa. Ever since they closed the school here, for two years she's working like this. My heart goes out of her so hard she studies. She will go to a real school then. I see to it. We come here from the Ukraine so our children can have better than us. We have savings. She goes. But Where? She could not go down to Edmonton and live by herself. Oh, no, that is true. Wait. Petro, why we don't think of it before? Your brother, Georgi, in Delaware at United States. There must be fine schools there. Sure. Sure he would take her in. Oh, Petro, she could come back, teach the other children, maybe even start the school again here. No, Mama. It would be too expensive. Oh, what good is our savings if we keep for ourselves? Good. I write to Gawardi and tell him our Slauka must learn in the United States. Dearest Mama and Papa, I am writing this on the aeroplane and will mail it to you when we reach New York. There was the boat to the town of Peace River. So slow, so full of time when I was in such a hurry. And then the motor bus to Edmonton that bumped and bumped over the hot, dusty roads. And then, oh, then, this airplane. You will wonder, Mama and Papa, if I am frightened. I don't think I am. For there below me, just the way I had dreamed it would look, the United States. And all the things I'd read about. Niagara Falls, and Rip Van Winkle, Valley Forge, Bunker Hill. And now, as I write to you, we are circling the island of Manhattan, and we're going to land any minute now. <laughs> Slauka, Times Square. What do you think? Oh, dear. It all looks so peaceful from the airplane, Uncle Georgie. Wait, Slauka, no more Georgie. Here in the United States, I am George. Oh, sure. Oh, what about just plain Anki? Fine, fine with me. And uh, we'll have to do something about your name, too. Jarl Slauka. In English, that would mean glory to God in the highest. So, in the United States, you will be Gloria. Gloria. Oh, I like that. Gloria Chumia. Good, good. Well, what would you like best now that you're in the big city of New York, huh? Uh, would it be too expensive if I had an ice cream soda? <laughs> Oh, the sky is the limit. What flavor you like? I don't know. I've never had one before. You haven't? 
Well, I'll tell you, you can't go wrong with chocolate. That is, un- unless you'd rather have strawberry or vanilla or pineapple. Oh, dear. I'd better let you too. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on. We get it in the restaurant at the Pennsylvania station. Then we take the train to your new home in Wilmington, Delaware. Come on, come on. We don't have much time. It is strange. You are in a hurry. Everybody here is in a hurry. It's a funny country. You have to get used to it. It's just that I expected people who have such great responsibilities as Americans have would be very serious and dignified. I felt that too when I first came over. The things they have here to make life so easy and comfortable, I thought to myself they they were like the topsoil. They they could wash away any time and leave nothing. Yes, yes, that's it. But then I lived here a while, Gloria, and I found out. Down underneath its good, rich earth, strength that nothing can wash away. That's important to people like us. You'll find it for yourself someday. Well? How do you do, sir? Oh, how do you do? They said I could find the principal of Wilmington High School here. I wish to register for your full term. Oh, I see. Well, I'm Mr. Fulmer, the principal. Why haven't you been in before this to register? School's about to start. I just arrived here from Alberta, Canada. I'm staying with my uncle, George. My name is Gloria Chomia. Well, Gloria, welcome to Wilmington. Please sit down. Thank you. Well, then, tell me all about yourself. Well, Mr. Fulmer... I think I ought to tell you I have been to school only two years. I beg your pardon? But I had two more years study with the Royal Canadian Correspondent School. Oh? Uh-huh. And you wish to enter high school? Yes, I've tried my best to learn, sir. I've read and read. I know your president, George Washington, John yes, Adams. Yes, yeah, yes, that's fine, Gloria, but we have a ruling, you see. In order to enter high school... Well, you must understand. You might hold the other students back if you were I would to... not. I wouldn't say a word in class. I would just listen. I want to listen, to hear and learn all I can. I wouldn't waste a minute. How could I? Your country has given me this chance to come here, and I want to repay it by hard work and study with all my heart. Yes, I see. But that isn't my point, Gloria. We want you to say a word in class to feel part of our student life. Yes, I understand. Well, I thank you very much, sir. You've been so kind to explain things to me. I... I'd better be going now. What are you going to do? I don't know. You see, my parents sent me all the way here so I could learn. And then I want to go back home and teach the other children... Because there isn't any school at all up there now. I never thought you might not let me in. Mm Mm-hmm. How old are you, Gloria? Fifteen. You see, Gloria, we have rules in our school system that are made for excellent reasons. Oh, yes, sir. I know. It's all right. But, of course, there's the old maxim that it's the exception... That proves the rule. I don't understand. Well, here. I'm going to see that you get your chance, young lady. Oh. Here you are. Here's a form. Oh, thank you. You just sign your name right there. That's it. Name, Gloria Chomiak, age 15, residence, Alberta. No. Residence. Wilmington, Delaware, United States of America. Now 
we continue our DuPont play, I Speak for Democracy, starring Susan Douglas as Gloria Chomiak, who in her new home in Wilmington, Delaware, is writing a letter to her parents in the far north country of Canada. Dearest Mama and Papa, today was the first day of the new term at Wilmington High School. I thought it was going to be quite simple that I would go there and register and start my classes. Oh, uh, pardon me. Could you please tell me where the library is? Why not? You're standing right in front of it. That's the door. Oh, it's rather confusing sometimes finding one's way. You're new here, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I am. Well, where did you come from? Up north, Canada. Oh, I suppose my not knowing my way around seems pretty strange to you. I don't mind if you laugh. Was I laughing? No. But I'm foreign and I'm a little mixed up. Oh, look. Practically everybody's mixed up first day of school. What's your name? Gloria. Oh, gee, that's nice. Mine's just plain old Winnie. Say, everybody go to the cafeteria for lunch. Do you want to meet me there? Oh, no, I couldn't. I brought my lunch from home. Well, eat it in the cafeteria, then. Oh, come on. Make it about 12, huh? And afterwards, I'll show you where things are around school, and you can meet some of the kids. Oh, it, it's awfully kind of you. Oh, fun. Well, be seeing you, Gloria. That's right, Winnie. Be seeing you. Dear Mama and Papa, I hope you'll understand why I haven't written very often lately. There is so much to study, and the most wonderful thing has happened. The editor of the school paper invited me to be a cub reporter. And last week, after school, Miss Wright, the director of dramatics, came in while I was working on the paper. But, Gloria... What are you doing here on a Friday afternoon? I'm working, Miss Wright. Somebody has to, as the reporters say, put the paper to bed. I see. Seems to me you're always that somebody. Oh, no, honestly, it's my turn, that's all. And besides, remember when our class toured the news journal? Mm -hmm. I met a real newspaper reporter, and her name is Miss Power... And she's helping me to learn how real reporters write their stories. Oh, Gloria, I'm worried about you. You're trying to do too much, take on too many activities. Library squad, debating club, school paper. But there's a limit, dear. I'm strong. We're a good, strong family. We know how to work, all of us. That's obvious, but... Oh, Miss Wright, my father and mother knew there was much for me to learn. But I don't think even they realize how much. There's something new every day. Some happening, some words to remember. I want to take back with me all I can absorb. Oh, Miss Wright, this is my chance. I don't want to waste a single second of it. Oh, I understand. I can go on with things, like the paper. I don't have to stop. Oh, nobody wants to stop you, Gloria. As a matter of fact, I don't think anyone could. But do me a favor, will you? Of course. Get out to a party now and then. Have a little non-constructive fun. Well, I... I mean it. The class party is tomorrow night. I want to see you there, or else. Hi, Benny. Hi, Gloria. Hey, you're all done up. You look cute as a button. Yeah, why didn't somebody tell me? Winnie fixed my hair a new way. Straight out of Junior Bazaar, I tell you. Hey, Winnie, did you hear about the contest? What contest? Miss Wright just told me about it, and I figured you and Gloria might be interested. I think it's something to do with writing a script for the radio. Oh. And I hear the prize is a scholarship to college. College? <laughs> oh, Winnie, let's find out. Okay. Come on. Miss Wright! Hiya, Miss Wright. Well, well, hello there. 
That's a good thing you made it, Gloria. You scared me into coming, Miss Wright. <laughs> I'm having a lovely time. Well, you look lovely, too. You're not kidding. Miss Wright, <laughs> we wanted to ask you about the contest. Oh, yes. Well, I just heard about it myself. Goldman Walsh and Harvey Smith over at WDEL told me about it. It's a radio contest. The National Association of Broadcasters, the Radio Television Manufacturers Association, and the Junior Chamber of Commerce are sponsoring it. Would any of you like to enter? It's for high school students all over the country. Well, uh, what do you have to do? Oh, just write a little talk on the subject, I Speak for Democracy. The winners will read their scripts over the radio. Jeepers, I wouldn't have a chance. Oh. What about you, Gloria? You're going to try it, aren't you? I don't know. Oh, don't be timid about it. Well, it's not supposed to be elaborate, an oration or anything like that. But the title, Miss Wright. Well? I speak for democracy. I haven't the right to speak for it. I wouldn't be eligible. Oh, that's nonsense. I'm afraid it isn't. Would be presumptuous of me even to enter. Oh, now, come, dear. Think it over carefully. And remember, the prize is a scholarship to the college of your choice. Yes, Miss Wright. I know. And so, dear Papa and Mama... You can imagine how I lay awake last night, dreaming and wishing I could take part in that contest. Then this afternoon, as I was going across Rodney Square to the library... Why, Gloria, hello there. Hello, Miss Power. It's nice to see you again. Where are you going? Want to help me cover a story? Oh, that's very kind of you, and I'd love to. But I was on my way to, to the library... Oh, looking up something for the school paper, hmm? No. I was thinking about a contest. I just want to write down how I feel about it, that's all. Contest? Oh, wait a minute. The Voice of Democracy contest. Yes. You see... Gloria, you ought to enter that contest. I was even going to suggest it to you if you hadn't heard about it. Oh, but you don't understand, Miss Power. There is so much I want to say... And yet, how can I, a foreigner, be the one to speak for democracy? Look here. You see that building over there, across the square? The federal building? Yes. What goes on there? That's where the courts are. Where everyone can get justice. Everybody knows that. And the city hall. What's that for? Oh, that's where the, the city government meets. Okay. Now, what about the public library over there? That's for knowledge. Isn't it there for everyone? That's right. But, Miss Power, I, I don't understand. No. That statue over there. The man on horseback? Cesar Rodney? Well, what about Cesar Rodney? I'm um, a little rusty on that story. Oh, well, I read about it in history class. Cesar Rodney was in Dover. But he found out that the resolution for independence might not be unanimous unless he got there to vote for Delaware. So he rode 80 miles through mud and lightning and thunder and reached Philadelphia just in time to cast the deciding vote. Good. Now, Gloria, you know, all the things we've been talking about, these buildings and the squares, the institutions they represent, probably wouldn't be here if men like Caesar Rodney had just sat back and let someone else do the talking. I never thought of it that way. Your voice is every bit as important today as his was, Gloria. Yes. I see. What you mean is that every voice that speaks out for democracy is important. Isn't it? That's the ticket. Okay, Miss Power. I'll enter that contest. <laughs> Mama and Papa, I don't know how to tell you. It is also unbelievable. But that day in the square decided me. I entered the contest. When I wrote the script, it was what I wanted to say, but I knew how many others would be doing the same. High school students from all over this country. 
How could I dare dream that later there would be an assembly at school and Mr. Fulmer would say... We have just received word of the winners in the Voice of Democracy contest. They are Anne Pinckney, Trinidad, Colorado, Richard Chapman, Brookings, South Dakota, Robert Shanks, Lebanon, Indiana, and it gives me the greatest pleasure to announce that one of the winners is right here in our own Wilmington High School, Gloria Chomiak. to Washington. I went to Congress. The members of the Supreme Court all stood in line and bowed to me. And I met the President of the United States. And then we went to Williamsburg, the little town where the first patriots of this country met to plan this nation. We gave our broadcast from the House of Burgesses, where Patrick Henry cried out, Give me liberty or give me death. I was standing there right beside General George C. Marshall as he talked to the audience over the radio. Friends, today we have gathered here in this historic shrine to honor four young high school students who, like Patrick Henry, have spoken out for liberty. They have spoken in their own way in a radio contest on the subject, I speak for democracy. But I am convinced that the words these boys and girls have written are more to them than a mere competition for a prize. They are the voice of democracy. Representing these four students is a young lady just 17 years old who I am proud to introduce. Her name is Miss Gloria Chomiak, from the Wilmington High School of Wilmington, Delaware. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Susan Douglas and myself. We have a surprise for you at this point in our cavalcade play. I don't think I could begin to read Gloria's winning speech as well as she did that day. And so that you may hear Gloria reading a part of it, as she did on that occasion in the House of Burgesses. Well, here she is. Not the actress, but the real Gloria Chomiak. I speak for democracy because two generations back, my ancestors could not. Because if I do not speak of it, if many more do not speak of it, there may come a time when we too will no longer have the right to do so. For today, more than at any other time, governing powers are pitted one against another. It seems a crisis has been reached and must be broken. We who believe in democracy cannot trust our living it alone. We must stand up and speak and be heard in its cause. And what is this thing called democracy? It is a thought discovered in ancient Greece. A thing that Slavic said dreamed of too much and paid for with his life. An ideal started in its practice by a modern parliament of England and bitterly struggled for in Louis France. It found a home in the new world when honest colonists learned to demand a rule by their own choice. It has grown from a privilege of the few to a right of the common, risen from a persecuted idea to a mighty ideal upheld in safety by millions. It is a government that has been developing for hundreds of years and shall develop for hundreds more. It has developed into a system whose imperfections can be remedied and whose virtues are a God-given right. A cynic spoke a truth about democracy when he said that it can make each man his own oppressor. Yet, I believe 
the greater men have said truer things about democracy, that the people's government cannot and shall not perish from the earth. 